Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello once again, I'm Bill Jordan, and it's so good to be back with these two knuckleheads. Yes, John and Art, Celebrating hey, Act 2. Here we are once again. Good morning, Bill. Bill oh, I mean, wait, I'm sorry, John. It may not be morning when somebody watches this. Well, you never know. It's the internet, right? Never, could be, right. It's Bill, good to somewhere. see you. Good to see you. And uh, I always like to know what movies you've been watching. You know, we get caught up into, you know, I, I've been watching a lot of the older movies. And, you know, I, I will tell you this, and this is an odd thing to say, and this is sort of blasphemy. But my wife and I got on a kick of watching, like, the old Hitchcock movies. And they just don't, I mean, the birds certainly love the birds. But some of the other ones that are considered classics, they don't do it for me. Or the old Humphrey Bogart movies, the, you know, Maltese Falcon and stuff. It's like... And I love Casablanca, but I don't. So we've been watching some of the old classics that I've never seen. These movies that people, you've never, I've never seen them. Um, when I go back to, though, when I go back to movies, when I was a just a kid, my dad, one Sunday morning, I remember this vividly. My mom and my dad had gone out with a double, on a double date the night before and had seen a movie. And my dad recommended a movie to me. I was maybe nine years old. And he said, you got to see this movie we saw last night. It's called Goldfinger. Mm. And, you know, if that's on AMC or, or whatever on, on TV, I will watch it. It's one of those, any Sean Connery, James Bond movie, uh, with the exception of Diamonds Are Forever, because I think that was the first Roger Moore James Bond movie, even though it starred Sean Connery, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will watch it. But Sean Connery, you know, we lost him a few months ago, but that... The hearing the news of Sean Connery, even though he's 90 years old, that one, I don't know how to explain it to you guys. That one hurt that I felt that one, you know, does, does that make sense to you guys? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Well, the, uh, the, the people we see in the movies, uh, particularly modern movies like Sean Connery, uh, as opposed to, I don't know, Edward G. Robinson or something like that. Right, right. Um, Although I did meet Edward G. Robinson, which is another story, but the people we see in the movies and see people we see on television are very real to us. And we, I, I think of think of this. Think of Oprah. Oprah, uh, you know, people love Oprah like a girlfriend. I mean, she is right. she is real to them. She is a a, a meaningful personality in their lives. Um, and all the talk show hosts tend to be that way. I think. They don't necessarily appeal to everybody, but to those people they appeal to, there's some kind of a connection that comes through Absolutely. the screen, movies sure. and television, you know. And sure. let's face it, we don't really know anything about the personal lives of these actors and actresses, you know, or the di famous directors or um, even authors, but we relate to them somehow. It, it's, a, yeah. it's a very understandable thing. You know, at well, the, end, the end of each year, there's a... Uh, uh, whether it be the Academy Awards or the other shows, and who knows what they're going to look like this year. But even if they're uh, uh, these uh, faux uh, jobs where they have people being just fed in and there's no real red carpet, they always have an in memoriam, whether it be uh, actors or whether it be uh, at the beginning of the football season, the basketball season, when they did Kobe Bryant, for instance. Uh, hard to believe that people like that are, are gone. Uh, right. But I think it, just in the acting world, uh, there were a lot of significant uh, deaths this year. Didn't uh, Sutherland, the father of Kiefer, uh, uh, pass this year? Uh, there have been a number of uh, character actors and other actors who have gone this year that are going to make up quite an in memoriam. Yeah. Uh, I don't I don't remember that Donald Sutherland died. Maybe he did. I don't remember that one. The one that hit me earlier in the year uh, of uh, 2020 was the actor Robert Conrad, who died back in uh, February. So we're all coming up on a year anniversary of him. And he was one when I was a kid growing up when Wild Wild West hit. And that was when primetime television began at 730. Yes. And Wild Wild West showed up on the East Coast, where I was growing up in Newport News, Virginia, at 730. At 725 on Friday nights, my butt was on the couch watching 
Jim West and Artemis Gordon and all the merriment that occurred on their train in the in the wild wild west. And then I just and, you know, and anything forget, he was in, but forget. I mean, I just he was the guy when I was growing up. And when he passed, that one that one hurt just like Connery hurt. I like yeah. wild wild west, but Bob Bob Black Sheep actually was my favorite. Uh, the Black Sheep Squadron. Yeah, Black Sheep Squadron. Yeah, Happy yep. wow. Boynton. Boynton. Uh, yeah. Well, John, John, you've actually been around for a while uh, uh, with having met some industry uh, uh, stars or uh, character actors. Anybody come to mind for you? Uh, no, not really. I, I think because I've worked with so many actors and actresses and, and a, a number of famous names as well, that um, I see them all as, as people. Um, I, I don't. I don't relate to them like um, like heroes or um, or uh, images on a pedestal. I, I what I see is I see somebody who's dealing with fame, and it, some people deal with it better than others. And I see people who are very protective of their privacy, of their who they are. They a lot of a lot of famous actors and actresses just do not want to reveal who they are. Um, and they're really very, very protective of their privacy. Um, Paul Newman comes to mind. Um, I had met Paul Newman a couple of times, and uh, he just, he is so protective, was so protective of his privacy, he would hide and wall himself off, and he would appear to people to be really nasty, quite frankly, just because he just didn't want to talk to anybody. Um, and he wasn't that way, but it would appear that way. So. I have a different perspective on on all those folks. Mm. Can't well, can't blame them. You know, uh, my wife and I, we were, our family was in London, England. We got lost coming out of Westminster Abbey. This is years ago, the late eighties, and we got lost coming out of Westminster Abbey. Came out of like a back door, and we were walking down the, this little alleyway. We made a right. As we made a right, I looked to my left across the street. I mean, fifteen feet from us was Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward, looking up at Westminster Abbey. And I turned to my brother-in-law and went, there's Paul Newman. There's Paul Newman over there. <laughs> and he says, that's not Paul. And so we're looking and they start walking like and catch up with us, my wife and, and uh, my sister-in-law. And they get up to us and one of us said, are you Mr. and Mrs. Paul Newman? Well, duh. And he didn't say a word. She didn't say a word. But my wife said to her, but you would rather us not make a, a big deal out of that, right? And and he said, thank you. And they just walked to their car and got in their car. But I mean, it was just smooth. It's like he was on a conveyor belt. I yeah. said this one time I saw Charles Bronson. It's like he didn't even think he was walking. It was so smooth. Just, oh, man. But that was a, but yeah, I can see where, I mean, they, they've got to, I, I would think they've got to be guarded. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, David Morrell, who's a famous author, he's the creator of Rambo wrote First Blood, in, or was published in 1972. The movie didn't come out until 82. He's become friends of, uh, we've become friends. He told me, he says, people who always want to wish that they were rich and famous don't know what they're talking about. You know, you wish for being rich all you want. Never wish for being famous. Yeah. Because all the headaches that go along with it. Right. It's something that we, we three of us deal with it really nicely. <laughs> in our own, in our own, in our own way. Well, I get because I was a radio guy for so long, especially in the Raleigh area for you know a long time, like 27 years. I will get you know. Didn't you used to be somebody? Yeah, but yeah, they don't. Somebody. They don't say that until you open your mouth and they hear the, <laughs> hear the voice. Right. Did you used to be somebody? Yeah. All right, guys. Listen, this has been great, um, and we do mourn Sean Connery and a lot yep. of other great people who have given. Uh, given our lives great pleasure. Uh, uh, the music yeah. room, I mean, Eddie hours, Van, hours of entertainment. Eddie Van yeah. Halen uh, was a, a big name in, in the latter part of the year. Sure. Uh, yep. So, yeah, sure. Uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, forget about your politics. I mean, there are a lot, of, a lot of people who yes. give it a, a lot of us uh, uh, reason. And not to forget the uh, uh, probably quarter million uh, uh, that have uh, died of uh, COVID until we get this thing under control. So yeah. a lot of lives right. lost. But right. you know what? Uh, you help us get through it because no matter what your age, you have a message for us. And what is that? 
Oh my gosh. I mean, again, he's just gotten smoother and smoother. Yeah, primarily for baby boomers, but it really is a philosophy that, you know, you can you can grab onto at any age, I think. And it's a lot of the practices that I've come up with, the 15 practices I've got for embracing the boom. I really wish I'd grabbed onto when I was 15 or 16 years old. Bottom line is regardless of your age, but especially if you're a baby boomer, remember to live your life, forget your age, regardless of what society tells you, and embrace the boom. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.